if there's uh, early stage capital that's available, uh, it would do two things. One, uh, it would ensure that uh, you know entrepreneurs and, and ideas uh, don't, uh, I mean ideas in particular don't die for lack of capital. And it would also the other thing it would do is encourage entrepreneurs to actually take the plunge and not just uh, you know have ideas stay in in in, in on paper or or in a silo. <clears throat> so I think um, uh, availability of early stage capital to me seems uh, one reason. I think the other is also uh, you know inherently if you're in in the business of if you're if you're in a business in the education sector. A lot of things take much longer time to be able to scale just by the nature of the business, right? I mean, uh, I think that's something that uh, that that is a challenge, and I, I think uh, <clears throat> as a consequence, uh, I feel sometimes you know people uh, there are unfair expectations of scale. The affordable K-12 space or any K-12 space is hard, and the reason it's hard is not because it's not amenable to technology and it can't be done better or differently. I think it's more difficult because it's a change management problem. Parents have to change their expectation of what learning should be. Teachers have to learn what they can do with the new things that are arriving. This is no different than companies had to learn how to use a CRM system better to get a result or how to use an ERP system. Those rollouts in the early days would go nowhere. Now you can't imagine starting a company without all of those things in place. Efficient growth of chains and more privatization, more well-run school chains, not individual standalone trusts that have to each hire individual students, uh, individual teachers, uh, I think are another area of growth. Demand aggregators have a tremendous role to play in being able to actually uh, frame uh, what, what gives the greatest value to, the, to their members. And I think that if you think, I think there are traditional models like school finance companies who can play a, a very significant role here. There are also some non-traditional, uh, you know, methods. School, uh, I would say, student, uh, you know, online student in engagement kind of, uh, you know, uh, platforms, um, parent platforms who can actually play a very uh, good role, teacher platforms that can play a very good role in, uh, in demand aggregation in this manner. The, what I'd add as I think an important uh, you know, additional to, uh, to demand aggregation is that if you look at the US, um, you know, the, uh, the school boards like the SAT exams and the SAT board actually plays a demand aggregating role. Yeah. And um, uh, parents, students, as well as the colleges see value in, in, the, in, in running through such a process.